It is on page 304 in the Green Book of Alternative <laughs> Services. This is the day that Christ, the Lamb of God, gave himself into the hands of those who would slay him. This is the day that Christ gathered with his disciples in the upper room. This is the day that Christ took a towel and washed the disciples' feet, giving us an example that we should do to others as he has done to us. This is the day that Christ our God gave us this holy feast, that we who eat this bread and drink this cup may here proclaim his holy sacrifice and be partakers of his resurrection, and at the last day may reign with him in heaven. Let us pray. O God, your Son, Jesus Christ, has left to us this meal of bread and wine, in which we share his body and his blood. May we who celebrate this sign of his great love Show in our lives the fruits of his redemption. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I invite you please to be seated for the reading of the word. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, this month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the tenth of this month they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat of it. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a year old male. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the fourteenth day of this month. Then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the lamb that same night. They shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roasted over the fire with its head, legs, and inner organs. You shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning you shall burn. This is how you shall eat it, your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord, for I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings, and animals. On all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you, you shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
unto you that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The word of the Lord. And thanks be to God. Please stand as you are The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Now before the festival of Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with a the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who is bathed does not need to wash, except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet and put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example, that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. The Gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I speak to you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. From what limited experience I've had with those who are facing their last moments in life, there seems to be one question that they usually ask. When people are faced with the reality of death, the thing that they most want to know is how will I be remembered? 
or what will I be remembered for, or simply will I be remembered? And would their time on earth mean anything to anyone else? What would their life have meant once they were gone? Jesus must have been asking those same questions of himself as he gathered with his friends on this day we call Monday Thursday. But he need not worry, because for us, today is all about remembering. And I don't mean just some vague remembrance or something that happened in the past. It is more than that. It is about partaking of these events ourselves. As we listen to the scripture readings and as we gather here tonight, the air is heavy with the weight of remembrance. The words are familiar to us, as are the events, just as Jesus intended them to be. He made preparations for the twelve to come together in that upper room. The thirteen of them gathered, as they had done many times before. But nothing would be like this night. No one knew what was coming tomorrow except for Jesus. He knew what was coming. And so he knew that this day would have to be memorable. Memorable enough to cover the hideousness of what would happen tomorrow on Good Friday. Memorable enough to sustain the disciples and the many who would follow through some very, very difficult times ahead. <clears throat> Memorable enough to last 2,000 years and beyond. Memorable enough for the good people of St. John's, separated by a great distance of time. On this night, we remember that Jesus knows that the cross is coming, that his time with the disciples is drawing to a close. We hold dear to us the events of this day as a sacred tradition, a tradition that has been passed down to us, as Paul says in his first letter to the Corinthians, as we received from the Lord himself. We remember tonight, not because we want to pretend we are in the upper room. We are here because it helps us to remember who Jesus was the day before he died and to recognize who Jesus is for us today. And so they gathered for the last meal. The busyness of the day had faded away. The noise of the streets below are shut out. And as they gathered together, now in the upper room, it is only the twelve with Jesus. There are no outsiders. No uninvited guests. There weren't even slaves to do the customary foot washing. And so before the meal began, Jesus rose, and as he did so, you could have heard a pin drop. He took off his outer robe, tied a rough towel around his waist, and one by one he washed the feet of the disciples. Simon Peter, Andrew, James, and then his brother John, Philip, Bartholomew, who some call Nathaniel, Thaddeus, Thomas, James, the son of Alphys, Matthew, the tax collector, Simon, the zealot, and Judas, the scarlet. He washed everyone's feet even Judas, especially Judas. Jesus spent his life ministering to the brokenhearted, to the sick, to the blind, to all those in need. But tonight, he was there with his twelve disciples. When he finished washing their feet, the sadness in his voice, he announced that he must leave them. To add to the sadness, he tells them that where he's going, they cannot come. And then he issues that one final command. 
is a culmination of all of his teachings, all of his parables that he taught people with, all the healing and all the miracles. It all came down to this last commandment, to love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. Remember me like this, he said. Love one another. These words are often lost on Monday, Thursday. The other events are so compelling and memorable. The act of the foot washing and the institution of the Last Supper command our attention and our memory. But the word Monday comes from a Latin word, mandate, the mandate. And that is what primarily the last commandment is, a mandate. A new commandment I give you, but you love one another. And so we pause to remember that this commandment is the center of our Christian faith and the day-to-day -day legacy that Jesus has left us. The foot washing, the Eucharistic meal, all have their roots in that commandment, to love one another as I have loved you. As the disciples watched Jesus wash their feet, it must occur to them, oh, he means love one another like this. Love can be expressed in many ways. And as the gathering progressed, Jesus asked them to remember and show love for him in the most familiar way, in the breaking bread and sharing of the cup. At that table, Jesus breaks his own body and bread to feed his disciples. He pours out his own blood in a common cup. And we remember. These rituals, the washing of feet, the sharing of bread and wine, are not just stories about our religious history. They lead us to walk with Jesus, to love as he loved. We will end our service tonight with the stripping of the altar. And when we strip the altar and take away all the stuff, we will also remember that tomorrow Jesus was stripped and taken away. And we are challenged to remember that we are to strip away all our stuff, to die to the powers of this world. As the altar is stripped, it is a symbol of walking with Jesus towards the emptiness that he must surely have. This is the night that we remember. We remember the group of 13 gathered there, Jesus and his 12 disciples. We remember the meaning of this day, of the act of servitude that Jesus did as he washed their feet, of the breaking of bread and the drinking of the cup, symbolizing his life-giving nature, of the last commandment, that we are to love one another as he loved. We remember that his actions still compel us to serve others as he served us. The stripping away of all other things, simply to love one another. That is how he wishes us to remember him this night.
Blessed are you.
Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. He welcomes sinners and invites them to his table. Let us confess our sins, confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you. God, we're very deep. By what we have done, and by what we have left behind us, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and be hungry again. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may be like you. Mighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you.
service continues with Eucharistic prayer number three, found on page 198. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of heaven and earth. We give you thanks and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord who for our salvation became obedient unto death. The tree of defeat became the tree of victory. Where life was lost, life has been restored. Therefore, with angels and archangels and all the heavenly chorus, we cry out to proclaim the glory of your name. Therefore, Father, according to his command, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray, you gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we made acceptable in him may be sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, reconcile all things in Christ and make them new, and bring us to that city of light where you dwell with all your children. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, the author of our salvation, by whom and with whom and in whom in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. 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 As our Savior taught us, let us pray. Our, our Father, Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your glory be mine. 
Let your church be the wheat which bears its fruit and die. If we have no idea of him, we shall live with him. If we hold firm, we shall raise him. The gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
Source of all love, on the night of his betrayal, Jesus gave his disciples a new command, to love one another as he loved them. Write this commandment in your hearts. Give us the will to serve others as he was the servant of all, who gave his life and died for us, yet is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God, generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. We invite you please to be seated. Now the festival of unleavened bread, which is called the Passover, was near. The chief priests and the scribes were looking for a way to put Jesus to death, but they were afraid of the people. Then Satan entered into Judas called Iscariot, who was one of the twelve. He went away and conferred with the chief priests and officers of the temple police about how he might betray him to them. They were greatly pleased and agreed to give him money. So he consented and began to look for an opportunity to betray him to them, when no crowd was present. Then came the day of unleavened bread, on which the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. So Jesus sent Peter and John, saying, Go and prepare the Passover meal for us, that we may eat it. They asked him, Where do you want us to make preparations for it? Listen, he said to them. When you have entered the city, a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him into the house he enters, and say to the owner of the house, The teacher asks you, Where is the guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you to a large room upstairs, already furnished. Make preparations for us there. So they went and found everything as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When the hour came, he took his place at the table, and the apostles with him. He said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I tell you that from now on I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Then he took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, <coughs> he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And he did the same with the cup after supper, saying, This cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. But see, the one who betrays me is with me, and his hand is on the table. For the Son of Man is going as it has been determined. But woe to that one by whom he is betrayed. Then they began to ask one another, Which one of them it could be? Who would do this? A dispute also arose among them as to which one of them was to be regarded as the greatest. But he said to them, The kings of the Gentiles lord it over them, and those in authority over them are called benefactors. But not so with you. Rather, the greatest among you must become like the youngest, and the leader like one who serves. For who is greater, the one who is at the table or the one who serves? Is it not the one at the table? But I am among you as one who serves. You are those who have stood by me in my trials, and I confer on you, just as my Father has confirmed on me a kingdom, so that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom. And you will sit on thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Simon, Simon, listen. Satan has demanded 
to sift all of you like wheat. But I have prayed for you that your own faith may not fail, and you, when once you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. And he said to him, Lord, I am ready to go with you to prison and to death. Jesus said, I tell you, Peter, the cock will not crow this day until you have denied three times that you know me. He said to them, When I sent you out without a purse, bag, or sandals, did you lack anything? They said, No, not a thing. He said to them, But now the one who has a purse must take it, and likewise a bag. And the one who has no sword must sell his cloak and buy one. For I tell you, this scripture must be fulfilled in me. And he was counted among the lawless, and indeed what is written about me is being fulfilled. They said, Lord, look, here are two swords. He replied, It is enough. He came out and went, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives, and the disciples followed him. When he reached the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not come into the time of trial. Then he withdrew from them about a stone's throw, knelt down, and prayed, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me, yet not my will, but yours be done. Then an angel from heaven appeared to him and gave him strength. In his anguish he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down to the ground. When he got up from prayer, he came to the disciples and found them sleeping because of grief. And he said to them, Why are you sleeping? Get up and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. When he was still speaking, suddenly a crowd came, and the one called Judas, one of the twelve, was leaving them. He approached Jesus to kiss him. But Jesus said to him, Judas, is it with a kiss that you are betraying the Son of Man? When those who were around him saw what was coming, they asked, Lord, should we strike with the sword? Then one of them struck the slave of the high priest and cut off his right ear. But Jesus said, No more of this. And he touched his ear and healed him. Then Jesus said to the chief priests, the officers of the temple police, and the elders who had come for him, Have you come out with swords and clubs as if I were a bandit? When I was with you day after day in the temple, you did not lay hands on me, but this is your hour and the power of darkness. Then they seized him and led him away, bringing him to the high priest's house. But Peter was following at a distance. When they had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat down together, Peter sang, sat among them. Then a servant girl, seeing him in the firelight, stared at him and said, This man also was with him. But he denied it, saying, Woman, I do not know him. A little later, someone else on seeing him said, You also are one of them. But Peter said, Man, I am not. Then, about an hour later, yet another kept insisting, Surely this man also was with him, for he is a Galilean. But Peter said, Man, I do not know who you are talking about. At that moment, while he was still speaking, the cock the Lord turned and looked at Peter. Then Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said to him, Before the cock crows today, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. Now the men who were holding Jesus began to mock him and beat him. They also blindfolded him and kept asking him, Prophesy, who is it that struck you? They kept heaping many other insults on him. When day came, the assembly of the elders of the people, both chief priests and scribes, gathered together, and they brought him to their council. They said, If you are the Messiah, tell us. He replied, If I tell you, you will not believe, and if I question you, you will not answer. But from now on, the Son
Son of Man will be seated at the right hand of the power of God. 